and then you bring your second finger angled like this. You have a distance already in between your first and second finger. That is huge. Now I'm using mini keys here just to, just to do a disclaimer here. This is a mini key I'm demonstrating on. This is a full size key. So obviously it would be a lot bigger here in the distance that I would be going from the starting point and with my second finger. But look at the angle. If I am going straight on like this, I waste that beautiful first interval that can be created between my first and my second finger. Angle like this. I'm gonna stay and keep that angle. I'm gonna to go to the third finger and I still have a strong, huge finger to play, even a longer interval from the first finger. And then if I go to the fourth finger, which has been sleeping over there because the third finger has been having a good time and the fifth finger has been reaching and the, first, the, the second finger has been pointing and the other ones were going, yeah, and the thumb, yeah. That fourth finger, okay, that fourth finger has been sleeping. And it's the secret finger, I always say, because what it does is it's strong, it's just as big as the second and third finger, and it angles perfectly on either hand between one and four. One, two, three, four, not one and five, but one and four. It angles perfectly so you'll play the perfect, strong, strengthful octave, whether you're going up to the right or down from your thumb on the left. It's such a great angle to play rather than playing one and five. It's so straight on. It's such a waste and everyone makes you play like a ball. Like this is such a waste. You got to play flat fingers. You got to play like, wah, you know? From between one and three, which is the third fun finger, which everyone knows is always having out, having fun. So you know the second finger is working really hard, and you know the third finger is having fun, so it's out there. There's another finger that you have, which is your fifth finger, and in the keyboard plane, you know it's always reaching out there, because it's the reacher finger. It's reaching. It reaches for everything. It is the reacher finger, the fifth finger. But if you were playing straight on, with no angle like a duck, then your reach your finger had been working a lot because it had been reaching for all those intervals. But if you put your thumb in the center of the street where it's touching, the center of the street, remember it's air right in the center here, halfway split between the lower letters and the upper sharps, and you play with your thumb onto the sharps and all through the letters, but are very close to the sharps, your fourth finger wakes up because the angle between one and four is eight notes, is an octave automatically. It becomes, we used to be the reacher finger if you were playing straight because it was to five. But now it's to four because the angle that you have, the distance goes clean like this across to the octave. It is so great now have a new way to play an octave. It's between one and four, not one and five, but you've angled your hand like a duck onto the keyboard and you've gotten that great feeling. We're also talking about two great things here. There is a first finger and a fourth finger angle that we're going to always try to think about. If I have that angle, then I can start to feel the correct way that I'm playing the keyboard. If I then hop like a rabbit, a rabbit is straight on, but it knows a distance to hop. And it stays, those paws stay a distance apart, but it hops. And it keeps the same distance as it hops. That's the same, you can gauge yourself, you can feel between one and four, that distance right there, and also between one and two, and one and three, and one and five, or whatever, but especially between one and one, one and two, one and three, and one and four. One and five will just always be there to reach out if you want. Your little finger's kind of little. Well, your little finger is your reach finger. It's called the reacher, or the reach finger. The third finger is the fun finger, the second finger is the pointer finger, and the thumb is the thumb. But this is also one. Two, the pointer finger is two. Three, the fun finger is three. Four, the fourth finger, the sleeper finger is four. And five, the reach finger is five. That's how it's numbered in keyboard ever. And you're fingering. But I say, if you slant from the very beginning of playing keyboards, one and four, octaving, and then hopping like a rabbit, hop like a rabbit, 
hop like a rabbit, hop like a rabbit, hop. In a certain angle, where you have that certain angle, where you're playing a certain line by causing your thumb to be angled now with your hand like this, that one and four become the greatest thing in the world. I'm an A sharp. Oh, the rabbit is falling onto the keyboard and hopping all over the place and trying to tell you that if you're hopping, you're going to keep the correct interval in a distance in between your fingers. Like this. If you light the octave in between your first and fourth finger at an angle like a duck, and you're playing your right hand or your left hand with your thumb onto the keyboard, that fourth finger becomes alive. Because the fourth finger is, the fourth finger is the secret finger. The secret finger because the little five finger is the reach finger, but the fourth finger is the secret finger. You know why it's the secret finger? Because it never does anything. It just hangs around and watches all the five doing all the reaching and all the three having all the fun, and all the two doing all the pointing it out. And now the thumb comes along, big brother thumb, and moves itself onto the keyboard and off the alley and strains its life out and gets back onto the road. And the straight and narrow, not only that, going in between the sharps and the letters right in the middle there. And by doing that slant, it makes your hand slant, whether you're in your left hand or your right hand, it makes your hand slant. So you play this way. Your, sharp, your thumb is here on a sharp, your thumb, your two, and the next octave is here, and if you slant it like this, you get a great octave with a strong finger. Not your little pinky finger, which is smaller, which is a great reacher distance-wise, but if you slant like this, you get that great distance between your first and your fourth finger, the sleeper finger, the secret finger. The strong finger, it's as big as three, having fun, and two point and everything. It's his biggest finger, but it never does anything, just sits there, but until you bring your thumb onto the keyboard, then it forces that line in between your first and your fourth finger. So you, all of a sudden you have a perfect octave. Same with the right hand, perfect octave. It's great, great, great trick. Great keyboard trick, this is what you have to do. You have to learn what they look like and what they feel like. You have to learn that distancing, like you're going to play in a certain distance and hop, and hop, and hop, hop like a rabbit, hop like a rabbit, hop like a rabbit, hop like a rabbit with a certain pawing like in front, and then you just hop, you know, you hop, and 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 you hop, you hop. Ah, it's a huge rabbit. Okay, too big a rabbit for this hopping thing. Hop and hop and hop and hop and hop. This hopping rabbit has a certain distance of hoppiness that it hops with its paws in a certain distance apart. That's what an interval does. It hops the same interval. If you're not playing chromatically, where you're just crawling and notching back and forth, you know, you're notching back and forth and you're kind of moving like this back and forth instead of just hopping, 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 instead of notching back and forth like holes. I'm gonna hop like a rabbit across the keys with a certain distance between my two fingers. Which be whether it's between my first and my second, because I'm now really angled against the keyboard. Whether it's my first or my third, the fun keyboard, the fun finger, whether it's between my first and my fourth, the secret lazy finger that we're gonna use more by slanting our thumb into the keyboard, or whether it's the reach finger, the fifth finger. Automatically octave from one to the other in your thumb. I mean, in your left hand and in your right hand, but in your left hand, I'm talking about from this root going down this way. The fourth finger, if you angle your hand like this, being the root, not like this, where you're reaching across like this, but like you're angled like this, it zooms across like this, root down, and you get an interval of an eight, which is so important in the bass. It's like the most important interval to learn. Eight. It sounds so simple, but it's hard to hop with a certain distance, not squishing a little bit, not raising a little bit, between two fingers. Whether it's a third, an M3, or an eight, or a fifth. It's important to learn how to feel and lock, and then hop like a rabbit, whether you're going in the left hand, 
or in the right hand, hopping like a rabbit, clink very cleanly between these distances. Cool? I just look at it sometimes. Oh, wow, that's cool. No, 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 not a tight rabbit again. No, I sometimes see that too. No. I'm getting used to it though. Pretty cool, huh? Hop like a giant rabbit. Hop, 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 hop.